wouldn't be. They've never met before, but John Stiles and Tom Charlton have much in common, sharing special memories. But they don't make them like that anymore. But heartbreaking ones too. Their families were at the heart of still England's greatest sporting moment, and they've both lost loved ones to dementia, caused, they're convinced, by football. John's dad, Nobby, died last year. Tom lost older brother Jack in 2020, and his other brother, Sir Bobby, is now suffering himself. It was heartbreaking to watch Jack, absolutely heartbreaking, because only seeing him and speaking to him intermittently, as his brothers do, I saw every time that he was getting a little bit worse. And you've got no doubt in your mind that what Jack suffered and what Bobby is suffering is related to what they did as a profession, to football. Well, all, I'm not an authority on the subject, but I fail to see how it can be possible to head the ball so many times and not develop some sort of damage. For all the research, for all the promises, John Stiles still believes football is in denial. He says the sport doesn't even know how many ex-players have dementia. Virtually nothing's been done for ex-footballers. Um, nothing has changed really since Dad passed away. Um, there's been calls for funds, calls for this, calls for that, but nothing's happened. And um, it's very disappointing. Well, if you look at my dad's team and Bobby's team of 68, half the outfield players and the only reason why they're getting um, such notice is because of their, their profile and the fact that they were top top players that was one team in 1968 you've got another 91 teams now that those lads brains aren't going to be different from the other lads it that's how big this is and it's just been totally ignored in december the fa premier league football league and the players union the pfa signed up to a joint action plan focusing on research, education and support for players. It's already recommended professionals limit their heading in training and for the under 12s it's banned completely. But is that enough? But what happens when you get to 13? Does your brain get tougher? It seems ridiculous to me. What do you think football is frightened of here? <sighs> do they have to admit liability if they're going to help? I, d I really don't know. It's a massive business, a huge business, a, a multi-billion pound business. Um, and perhaps they're frightened of the consequences. Football is absolutely swimming in money. There's no problem with money. And yet you've got players who've given their life and who were heroes to the fans who are suffering for the lack of help. So would Tom like the younger Charlton clan to follow in the family footsteps? I've got grandsons who are coming up to that age. I don't, I talk to them about not heading the ball. You tell your grandsons not to head the ball? I do. And they understand why you're saying that? Yes. According to John, one of the biggest scandals is the lack of scientific research passed on to current players about CTE, the degenerative brain disease caused by repeated blows to the head. I'll put any money on it. Harry Kane doesn't know about CTE. Carl Walker won't know about CTE. I bet they don't know. And that's not right. These footballers should know the risks that they and Then they can make their own informed decision. And that's never been done. And that, that is a disgrace. John and Tom have vowed to carry on their campaigning until they believe football couldn't possibly do more. And they say we're still a long way from that point. Steve Scott, ITV News.